Many people are familiar with growth hormone. Growth hormone is obviously the key hormone that affects how children grow. And growth hormone works through another hormone which is called IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor 1. And for many years, pediatric endocrinologists have been familiar with growth hormone and IGF-1 in measuring these and helping to diagnose children with growth hormone deficiency. Well, just around two or three years ago, our group identified five children from two families, one in America and one in Spain, who had mutations in a new gene, a gene called PAPA2, and we found that PAPA2 was very important for regulating how IGF-1 was able to work and able to bind to its receptors. So IGF-1 is found in your blood and in circulation bound to specific binding proteins. And PAPA2's job is to free it up from those binding proteins, allowing it to work, allowing it to promote growth. And these five children had mutations in PAPA2 where it, the PAPA2 was not able to free up the children's IGF-1. Um, so these kids were stuck with normal growth hormone, normal IGF-1, but it couldn't work, it couldn't do its job, so they weren't growing very well. This was a whole new paradigm to how we think about the regulation of growth. Now it's not just growth hormone and IGF-1 and maybe it's binding proteins, but now there's this new level of regulation of PAPA2 and related proteins regulating how IGF-1 can work. So as a follow-up to our initial study where we found these children with this rare genetic mutation in the gene, we wanted to ask the question of what is PAPA2's role in normal childhood growth? What are levels of PAPA2 throughout childhood? Nobody knew the answer to that. That had never been investigated before. And we thought perhaps PAPA2 is, plays a role in freeing up IGF-1 during puberty and making you grow more during puberty. That was our initial hypothesis. But actually we found that when we measured PAPA2 in over 800 healthy children from ages 3 to 18 years, the PAPA2 levels actually fall throughout childhood. And we're just starting to learn about the relationships between these PAPA2 levels and the free form of IGF-1 and the binding proteins. So our study is really starting to explore how PAPA2 plays a role in the normal regulation of growth throughout childhood. And once we've established this normal, the normal ranges and what its role is in normal growth, then we'll be able to start to investigate whether there are problems with PAPA2 and the regulation of IGF-1 in other growth disorders. So this is really just laying the groundwork for many more years of research and investigation into childhood growth disorders.